tough now. Frederick Le Bouillet is the grandfather of natural childbirth. He's 92 and worked for many years as an obstetrician before a change of heart about the whole nature of birth. There's no doubt his controversial views have had quite an impact. His book, Birth Without Violence, first appeared in 1975, and it was a lyrical reaction to what many felt was becoming an over-medicalized approach to childbirth. Disturbed by the cries of newborns, he advocated a mother's touch and the immersion of the newborn in warm water shortly after birth, something taken on by Michel Audon in his development of water births. Well, to mark a new translation of Birth Without Violence by Yvonne Fitzgerald, Frederick Le Bouillet came to Britain, and when I met him, he described his early years as an obstetrician. I delivered, also, this is the way I used to talk, more than 10,000 children. And at one point, I started asking myself the question, when a child is born, it should start breathing gently, and the screaming is unbearable. It's expressing such uh, an agony, such a despair, and I could not understand this paradox that a child should be so happy being free from his prison and enjoying freedom, and on the contrary, it was desperate. But the peace and the quiet of the womb, that must be a very difficult place to leave, surely. So isn't what a... What mean? Well, isn't a newborn baby bound to scream and express? Yes, and it's desperate. And the question was, why? And I started asking myself, how can I communicate with this newborn was not talking but expressing and make him understand that it's fine to be here. So what did you decide to do? It was not a decision because decision is mental. But it was communicating with the child without words, simply by touch and by understanding what was his condition. When the child is born, he's entering the kingdom of breath and breathing. So he must simply be given time. What about warm water? Warm water is very simple. What is so frightening for the child is that the moment he's born, everything is new and unknown. So feeling warm water is like meeting a friend in a foreign city where you know no. So the child is thinking, ah, oh, something I know, something I know. And his anguish mm. begins to cool down. You, you say you delivered babies in what we might call the old-fashioned way. Well, I will tell you what. I've been stealing women. I used to give them anesthesia. Just like Queen Victoria, chloroform. And the moment the woman is given anesthesia, she's missing the best of it. It's a territory which is very special, very private. And we are going to use the word Freud invented, libido. And of course you understand what libido means. I, yes, but I'm not quite sure whether I'd associate it with childbirth. <laughs> this is a culmination of libido. And this is fantastic. And it is something which is very hard to understand. And childbirth is like a progression towards, you see, one has to be so careful with words. Well, you do. I mean, you are basically saying, and correct me if I'm wrong, that natural childbirth is the ultimate sexual experience. There you are. And it's not natural, of course. It's a mystery. I don't know who said that. Regarding the great mysteries of life, nothing can be said with words. It has to be guessed or understood intuitively by wise men or poets. But it's as simple as this. This is a culmination of sex life, and it's a progression toward an orgasm. Same progression. Stop. Stop. So, so what is the role? of the doctor? No in... one, no, 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 not much ever. Alone we are born, alone we live, alone we die. 
the doctor is there only for pathology. But health goes with it. The moment the doctor comes, you're sick. Well, there obviously, over the last number of decades, has been a change to medicalize childbirth, hasn't it? Yes, um, that's true. And it, is any of that right? Completely wrong. Totally wrong. Can I sleep for you? No. Can I eat for you? No. Can I give birth? Can anyone give birth for you? No one but you. Well, that, of course, that's not quite true. I mean, I, I, I will talk about myself in, in this instance. And I had two elective caesareans because both my babies were breech babies. That's a complete mistake. Is it? Okay. Breach is normal. So what should have but, happened? But what is wrong with breach? It is a normal physiological posture of the child during the last months of pregnancy. But if a woman is too tense, and forgive me if saying so, if she's too much afraid, then the child cannot. So the actual thing which ought to be done would be to make the woman free from her fears. If she would face her fear, if instead of running away, she would say, yes, I'm afraid. Yes, if you would look your fear in the eyes, it would be right here. But, but uh, we know that hundreds of thousands of women all over the world, some in very poor countries, die in childbirth. No, that's not true. Why is that's that not true? Lie. That's a lie. That's a lie. Forgive me for saying so. What you are saying now is a sort of excuse for what you've been doing, but there is no guilt. What you have been doing is all right. Accept it. Accept it. But, you see, fear is such a great part in our lives. Yes. Well, you see, I have to, I have to ask this question, or, or make this point. Excuse yeah. me, Frederick, right. but, I mean, you, you are a man. There will be millions of women who've been through childbirth, some naturally, some having caesareans, some right. having emergency caesareans, and they will all say to you, you're a man. So, actually, although it's great that you're interested and that you're so passionate in, about the subject, you are a man, and you will not have to give birth, and you haven't had to give birth. All I'm telling you, I learned it from women. And one thing should be very clear, childbirth is a secret garden of women. Men can never know anything about this. Can I just ask, is, is there, in your opinion, ever a place for medical intervention in childbirth? Only when it goes wrong. But not yet. we've got to try. At a certain point of labor, woman is experiencing death. And because she's been able to face death, she becomes free from the fear of death. Is there anything about modern childbirth that you think there is, is, no such is right? Thing as modern well, okay. Is there is there or anything or positive or about our current experience? Oh no, it's nothing positive. It's okay. all over. If you've decided you're not going to take any risk, then you're really in danger. And childbirth is complete risk. And you're put on your method. Either you take the challenge or you chicken off. When you uh, attended births and watched so many women, so many thousands of women in labor, were you jealous of their experience, would you say? No, no, no. I was convinced it was so painful and it could not but be painful. I used to give them chloroform anesthesia. The moment there is anesthesia, she's missing One. And second, so important, there cannot be any bonding between the mother and the child. Because? Because anesthesia separates the mother from the baby. And wait a minute, no woman is giving birth to a child. It's a child who wants to be born. The active actor is a child, not a woman. So it's a sort of adventure which is experienced in collaboration between the child and the mother. 
And he says, why, the father should not be there. Should not be there. Mm -hmm. It is absolutely forbidden. Because her attention has to be turned completely inside. And she is only, as it were, talking without words with the child. Am I helping you well? But it's a child who is the, the conductor of it. Well. So a woman should be alone, but, but what about the role of a midwife? Preparing a coffee in the kitchen and saying, in case you need me, you call me. The opinion of Frederick Le Bouillet. Any thoughts on that? Then please do contact the programme via the website, of course. Uh, well, that's birth then. Uh, what happens in the next 20 years or so? What approach should we adopt to bringing our children up? Lots of intellectual stimulation and oodles of parental involvement in the form maybe of Mandarin lessons and a 24-hour, seven days a week taxi service on tap? Or should you just kick back, crack open a takeaway pizza and loll in front of the box and just kind of get on with it? Well, the American author and economist Brian Kaplan says we're all making too much of a meal of parenthood these days. And if we could just relax, we'd have bigger families and be a lot happier. I talked to Brian, whose book is called Selfish Reasons to Have More Kids, and to the freelance journalist Lydia Slater. I asked Brian why he thinks modern parenting has turned into some kind of unnecessarily heavy burden. Keyword is unnecessary. So... Obviously, there are many things that parents do that are not very fun, like staying up with a crying infant that can't be avoided. But there are a lot of things that parents are doing right now that they feel like they have to do for their kids' long run benefits. Their children won't turn out well unless they, for example, take them to soccer classes or push them to eat foods they don't want to eat or ride them to excel in school. And yet, adoption and twin studies, which actually measure the long run effect of parents and how kids turn out, just don't find very much effect. So it looks like parents really are beating their heads against.